At some period of his life, Mikhail Alexandrovich Rubel had lived in the St. Cyril Church while working on his painting called The Descent of the Holy Spirit. It was an interesting moment. Everybody knew he was in love with her. He liked women very much. Prakov knew about it, but he never took his revenge on him. On the contrary, he tried to concentrate on his work. He was sent there because he was to see Venetian art. And generally speaking, Venice is the homeland of painting. The idea was that he would go there to feel the Venetian culture. Kyiv Painting Gallery, National Museum of Russian Art, the Kyiv Gallery National Museum. All these are the names of the same establishment which was opened in Kyiv in 1922. The history of the museum is full of the absurd and paradoxes. Hunger is raging in the country, but the authorities pompously celebrate the fifth anniversary of the October Revolution. The museum was established in a manor. It included art collections of Ukrainian entrepreneurs and patriots. The Tereshchenko family, ironically, it was open to celebrate the same revolution that had forced the Tereshchenko family to leave their native Ukraine. Resurrection, Angel with a Censor, The Lamentation. By the way, there are four versions of the letter. He was gradually approaching that final result, that lamentation. He was looking for the right composition, figures of Mary and Christ, the landscape, the window opening, and the quintessential wall surface. Sketches Rubel made for decoration of St. Volodymyr's Cathedral came in different sizes and different plots, but all of them bore one particular similar feature. The episodes Rubel depicted in his sketches and planned to realize in the wall decorations didn't exist in the canonical gospel. Spring 1885. The extraordinarily talented young painter named Mikhail Rubel returns from Venice to Kiev. From his trip abroad, the artist brought icons for the iconostasis of the St. Kirill Church. Among them was the Mother Virgin Mary with the infant Jesus. The chief of decoration works, Adrian Prokov, recognized his wife in the image. Adrian and his wife Emilia reacted to this fact calmly as they did too many of Rubel's innuendos before that. However, the next trick Rubel tried to pull had crossed the line of decency for Prokov. Namely, the artist asked for Emilia's hand in marriage. The Prokovs threatened the artist, who was absolutely madly in love with Emilia, with understanding. They pretended that nothing had happened and asked Rubel to simply forget about this unpleasant incident. It was a mental affection. Rubel himself eventually understood he wasn't normal, but his love for Emilia meant everything to him, to the point where he walked around Kiev in a 17th century Venetian suit, a beret, leg warmers, and a camisole. <laughs> <laughs> the artist's unrequired love did not let go of him day and night. He even cut himself with a knife to numb the suffering. 
That went on for several months. In the summer of 1885, the miserable artist decided to go to Odessa so that he could not see the beloved woman of his life. His love problems became amplified by artistic struggles. At the time, decorations of St. Volodymyr's Cathedral were being prepared in Kiev. Mikhail Rubel was getting ready for them as well. His preparation had started with his trip to Venice. As it is known, he made an iconostasis for the St. Kirill's Church. He was engaged in other works as well. In a way, he tried to imagine his future work in St. Vladimir's Cathedral. He was absolutely passionate about taking part in this work. Moreover, he was not only imagining his participation in this work, but was even developing sketches for it. But Prakov didn't invite Rubel. As Prakov later recounted, the reasons for this were strictly personal. Rubel had taken the fact that he was not going to partake in the decorations of St. Voldemort's Cathedral very tragically. After all, it was his dream to bring to life this grand concept of wall paintings. Rubel returned from Odessa to Kiev in the beginning of 1886. In spring, the artist started developing sketches for St. Voldemort's Cathedral on his own. Encouraged by praises of Vostensov and the Sudomsky brothers, Rubel had convinced himself the issue of his participation in the decoration works would soon be resolved on its own. After all, said and done, Rubel was finally invited to work on the decorations of the St. Vladimir's Cathedral. However, his very first work, by Sudomsky's sketch, was rejected by the building committee. Prakov approved of several of Rubel's sketches, but the artist didn't manage to finish them. Rubel created some really ingenious sketches for the St. Vladimir's Cathedral, but then he missed several important meetings and failed to work on schedule to meet deadlines. But this required teamwork, as dozens of people work here. If you are to finish the painting in December, then December it is, not June. He did not complete his tasks on time. He would go wandering around somewhere dreaming of something. He was the absolute opposite of a team player. There were other reasons Rubel did not show up for work, he tried to drown his grief in alcohol. He would often spend his time in hanging out in local restaurants, gambling houses, and brothels at night. Це Коко, вона знає все про пристрасне кохання. А це Марії, з нею ви забудете про все. Забуду. Це те, що мені зараз потрібно. He was also fascinated by a dancer who came to Kyiv, but that affection hadn't grown into serious relations. It is hard to believe, but in all his madness, the artist predicted modern trends. Thanks to his friends from the cathedral, he was assigned the task of painting the ornaments in the St. Vladimir's Cathedral. He managed this task and did an excellent job with these ornaments. One day, after painting such an ornament, he came to Prokov with his nose painted green. Amelia noticed and made a remark to the artist about it. Ви вимазали весь ніс зеленою фарбою? Ні. Я це навмисно зробив. Мені так подобається. Вам же жінкам можна фарбуватися? Чому нам не можна? According to Rubel, all men will soon paint their noses in different colors depending on their character and temper. At that time, he just wanted to get the attention of his beloved woman. But today, it is going on almost as the artist predicted. At the very least, painted men have inundated the planet. But in that comical incident with the green nose, Emilia had merely suggested to Rubel that he should have washed his face before coming. He continued working on the ornaments at the cathedral, although without any particular interest in it. He didn't make much money from the ornaments. It was barely enough for him to go to bars and go carousing at night. In 1889, Mikhail Rubel decided to leave Kyiv. Right before leaving, he showed Prokov all his sketches for St. Vladimir's Cathedral. The professor had seen most of the sketches for the first time, and he told his wife and daughter about them. 
Михайло Олександрович показував такі чудові ескізи, але до них потрібно будувати новий собор. Шкода. Шкода. It is unknown how many sketches for St. Vladimir's Cathedral Vrubel created, but the fate of most of them is that they were destroyed by the hand of their creator. Unfortunately, very few survived those difficult times for Vrubel. Sadly, very few of these works have survived, not more than ten. All of them are kept in the collection of our museum. Those are four versions of the Lamentation, one sketch of the descent of the Holy Spirit, Angel with the Center, and of course the Resurrection. That's it. Saving the sketches became possible thanks to Tereshenko's patrons. They often bought the works by Mikhail Vrubel. The sketches were no exception. The buyers were Alexander Tereshenko and Ivan Tereshenko. They had bought the sketches especially for their private collection. Something was given as a gift to the city museum, the present-day Ukrainian museum. And then, when the Russian museum was opened, the sketches were relocated to our collection. Certain circumstances forced Mikhail Vrubel to leave Kyiv, therefore his talent wasn't revealed to its full extent here, and the beautiful city with its golden dome churches beaming over the Dnipro, although it was Kyiv that revealed the unique talent of the artist to the world. I believe both Nesterov and Vrubel started showing their talent in Kyiv. They developed their own styles and certain lyrical themes in art. He established himself in Kyiv, became a real painter. After that, he came back to Moscow to work as a decorator for the Sava Mamata Theater. And that, for the artist, was the next step up the ladder on the way to perfection and achieving success. Kyiv brought Rubel to new artistic heights. The city made him known and in high demand. But at the same time, it was the city that brought about his demise. It was Kyiv where the artist started drawing demons. Ні, не чорно, біло. Ось. Бо якщо я розмалюю цього янгала чорним кольором, з нього вийде непоганий демон. He couldn't get rid of this winged image all his life. Angels, demons, it was his disease. It was a mental and spiritual disease for Vrubel, and it began in Kyiv. The expert believes Vrubel to be the Russian version of Dr. Faustus, as in the works of Thomas Mann, and he sold his soul to dark forces. Rubel could have painted icons, but the demons took him to their side. He communicated with otherworldly dark powers, and they destroyed him. The other thing that brought about the artist's demise was the woman who inspired him for the masterpiece. She became his mother Mary and his demon. Emilia indirectly caused not only his mental disease, but a physical one as well. To forget his muse, the genius visited prostitutes, and he paid a great price for that. Eventually, he got sick and the disease affected his nervous system. Thus, Kyiv gave the world a great genius and a great madman to be remembered as Mikhail Vrubel.